Hey guys, Roger from the How To Headquarters. I want to show you how we put these beautiful stone, stone corbels onto a uh, masonry fireplace that's thin veneer. These, I think, really sell the idea that it's a three-dimensional real fireplace because they stick out from the veneer. But getting it to stick on is a bit of a trick. That's what we're going to show you next. Uh, there's actually a doubled stud, which there normally is, next to the uh, opening of the fire box. And we've got those marked, and that is where we're going to uh, connect this corbel. Uh, there's a couple ways to do this, but the cleanest way to get it most flat is uh, to have a quarry actually pre-cut these. I mean, these are dead perfect at the quarry. A lot of places, the same quarry that you could get your thin veneer stone has the technology to cut this. If not, you can do this yourself with a wrecking saw or a big diamond blade. It just takes time and you've got to get it pretty nice and clean with a decent face and you've got to find two rocks that match in thickness so you have some symmetry there. Once you've got that piece, it's a matter of getting it connected to the wall. Over here, this is our sneaky trick. We take a Advantech, which of all the woods would be the one I would trust the most uh, for this kind of a spot. So just a piece of Advantech that's cut a little bit longer than the corbel so that we can screw on the bottom and on the top. And we're gonna glue this hole back onto the wall. The connection there, and I used to use epoxy, but I really don't think anything matches a, uh, like a PL500 landscape, which is available at almost any lumber yard. But this is an adhesive for, uh, it's usually used for the capstones on like those landscape uh, uh, piece stones that the way they put the caps on, uh, but it has an incredible uh, sticking ability to stone. So we're gonna go goober that all over the place here. And I've already drilled these holes. This is where you can have a disaster. Uh, use the hammer drill with a 5 16 bit to drill these guys. Think about where you're drilling. It's way better to do your drilling up here and stop early. If you drill down here and only even drill a, a half inch and a half, you can have a blowout out the other end. Don't ask me how I know that. But that's something to avoid. We get the goober on there, we goober it right in to these holes. Now, the screw itself that this is gonna connect with isn't as important as you think. The glue is doing most of the work. The screw is basically providing a, which side is which, this side? The, the glue is basically, or the screw is basically providing a mechanical connection that would avoid any shear strength going on but it doesn't have to like be bound in. And if you make all your effort trying to get like a big screw to really bind in and tighten, you have a high probability of cracking the stone in some way. So I think it's far safer uh, to drill it. And you can even just pin it. You've got a couple options here. A regular green deck screw will work. If you're carrying a huge amount of weight, GRK makes these fantastic masonry screws. With these, if you were to use these, you'd want to countersink the hole, uh, and that would work quite well. But in this situation here, I think it's a safer route. I've drilled these holes on kind of odd angles, and we're gonna just pin them with uh, the deck screws. I got it upside down at the moment. But, uh, there they are like that. And then, when we go to install it, we're gonna leave this overnight with uh, some pressure on it. We're gonna leave that overnight with some pressure on it so that that glue, which is unbelievable, like if you were to try to take two landscape uh, stones apart with that, you would end up blowing out the landscape stone before it ever uh, uh, broke that seal. So that's gonna dry overnight, and then tomorrow we'll make a quick video of uh, installing these guys nice and even on the fireplace. So this is the big moment. We're gonna put this corbel on the wall. I put more of that landscape adhesive on the back because I know 
This thing's not going to go on perfect. I'm going to have to do a little bit of a shim pack. When I do that, uh, the glue will actually kind of squeeze with it, and when it hardens, I'll still have a solid 100% connection. So this mantle height is going to be at 64 inches. You get that for free on the one side. We're going to set this guy, worry about level, and then we'll set the other guy off of the level to make sure it's perfect. But we're going to ease it on. I know I have a double 2x4 stud right up here that I can hit into. And without dying, we're going to get this guy in here. Coming up to 64 inches. And driving it in. So that's basically it. Then we're going to get this thing perfectly level both ways. That's where these shims are going to come in handy in the event that the bottom's going to come out just a little bit. Then we'll screw it all the way around, do the same on the other one. Then when we put our stone on, when the stone comes close to this mortar joint, I'm going to cut a little bit out the back of this stone to kind of wrap up and get this a tight looking mortar joint. And we'll just mortar this edge and it'll look just like that stone is coming out of the wall. And when that's all said and done, that's going to be a very solid surface to put that mantle on. Thanks for watching. This is the uh, How To Headquarters. Back at the channel, we've got a lot more videos on how to do some of the technical things in the masonry world. And uh, please like, subscribe, and share.